Lately, I've been getting a lot of comments about my audio and specifically my voiceover sound. You know, is, is it the mic? What are you doing to it? How are you processing it? Is it the room acoustic treatment? What's going on? Well, you know, I started in audio and then later transitioned into video. So I always make a point to make sure my audio is the best sounding it possibly can be. Sure, I'm doing cool things at every stage of that, you know, from the room acoustic treatment to the microphone to uh, the way it's processed, all of that kind of stuff. But I would say the single most impactful thing that, you know, that happens in the chain is the way that I use compression. Now, how would you want it to sound? Smooth? Controlled? Rich? Me too. Coming up, I'll show you what I do. I'll show you my settings that I use on my compression for every single video. Plus, I've got a recommendation for a really amazing free compressor plugin coming up later in the video. But first, if you could do me a favor and take a second just to hit that subscribe button. I'm making a push to 80,000 subscribers, so honestly, it would just mean the world to me. Thank you in advance. So now let's take a look behind the curtain of the confusing world of compression. So you start using compression and you quickly realize that there's a lot of jargon. There's a lot of terminology that apparently we're all meant to know. And if you don't, you're an idiot, apparently. Come on, M manufacturers of compressors, this sort of thing should be more accessible. I kind of wish it was. Let's start with the term VCA, and this refers to the circuit that's doing the compression and stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. Think brands like SSL and API. The sound that's associated with VCA is clean and uh, controlled and tight and punchy. So it's a very safe bet. So much so that if you're not sure which compressor to choose, which type, this is a, a really good, just no-brainer option. Next, we have FET, and that stands for Field Effect Transistor. Think Universal Audio 1176. FET compressors can be really fast in catching those transients, so much so that they, they can be, you know, aggressive and uh, gritty and can add character. You know, they are cool as hell. They're, they're considered quite sort of rock and roll. Uh, in the way that they sound, and whilst I love I love the sound, it's not necessarily the first kind of option that I would go for for voiceovers. Next we have Opto, and that stands for Optical Circuit. Think Teletronics LA2A, now made by Universal Audio. Sound-wise, they're not as fast and snappy as FET, but they are also not as clean as VCA. And because they sit in that sweet spot, they're actually quite a nice option, in my opinion, for voiceovers. Albeit, I do like the option to have an even faster attack, just, you know, to, to kind of catch the transients. Good option, though. Then we have tube, and these obviously you just use a tube in the compression circuit. We, we call them valves in the UK, by the way. And they are the slowest of the aforementioned compressors that I mentioned, so they need applying with care. They can be a really nice option for, for vocals, but often, you know, again, maybe not quite fast enough to catch all the transients that you might want them to. I've owned quite a bit of outboard compression in my time, but my favorite without question is the diode bridge compressor found in my Heritage Audio Brit Strip, which you can see uh, here and all of my audio goes through that. So it feels like all of the positives that I mentioned from the circuits from, you know, VCA and FET and um, Opto and that kind of thing, if you take all the positives from those circuits and shove them in a blender, whiz them up, and kind of that's what a diode bridge compressor gives you. It's, it's like, it's for me, the perfect just kind of midpoint sweet spot. So the way that I use compression, as I mentioned, I put all of my audio through my Brit strip. So I love compression on the way in, in my recording chain from source to microphone, to preamp, to EQ, to compression, and then into my, you know, to my uh, interface. I do have some really good recommendations for other hardware compressors that are just inexpensive um, coming up a bit later, but I really just want to be crystal clear about this. You don't need a hardware compressor, just to say that. And I'd say there are lots of processes to nail before you get into compression. 
things like uh, you know acoustic treatment, um, mic choice, getting studio monitors, all of that side of it. But if you're ready to take the plunge, the uh, getting a great compressor can be a fantastic investment for voiceover work. To use a hardware compressor with your audio interface, you'd either need a separate standalone preamp, so you can go from your mic to preamp to compressor and then line in to your interface, or your interface will need to have a spare input and spare output, so you can go mic to the preamp in your interface, from an output to your compressor, and then line in to a separate input on your interface. Sounds like a lot of fuss, right? Well, it can be, but is it worth it? Oh yeah. I've gone for the first option with my Heritage Audio Britstrip. So I go microphone into my Britstrip, which has a preamp section. It's then got an EQ section and then the compression. And then that goes into my SSL 12 interface. I've done reviews for both of the Heritage Audio Britstrip and the SSL 12. So they will be linked. Uh, definitely check them out. They've been a couple of my most popular reviews over the last year. Definitely recommend that. But let me show you now my settings that I use for the compression on my Brit strip for these talking head videos and for when I do voiceovers. Okay, here you can see my Brit strip and switching it on, you can see kind of what I've got going on. With the preamp, I like it to be, you know, relatively hot. I, I like a little bit of saturation from the preamp. Um, the EQ is just a, a small bump in the low and high frequencies and I have the EQ happening before the compression and I actually don't do anything with the mid band. I like a two to one ratio. I, you know, I only ever go as high as about four to one for uh, vocals. I'm using the appropriate amount of makeup gain and I actually like the auto release section on this and I know that's not very popular, but it does a great job. So, you know, it works for me. I also have the fast attack button engaged and that's just because I want it to catch transients and um, it, it leads to a less kind of spitty sound. This unit also has a blend function, which I do use sometimes, but you know, never as far down as say 50%. And there is a sidechain filter, which is super cool. I sometimes use the 80 Hertz setting, but often it's just not necessary. And that's it. Fast attack, auto release, gentle compression ratio, and that's just what works for me. But if you prefer to do compression in editing, I get it. It's a far safer way to do things. You know, you're not baking in a certain level of compression or even a sound. So it's definitely the safer option. All video editing software comes with some form of compressor you know, and they're probably fairly decent. I've always found them personally to be more on the clinical side of things. They, you know, they have a digital feel and I've honestly never been able to get the same kind of rich, chewy, kind of thick sound that I get with um, an analog compression unit. But that's just me, it's just my preference. At the top of the video, I mentioned that I had a recommendation for a really good compression plugin that's completely free, and it's called Molotok from a company called Tokyo Dawn Records. They do lots of free versions of their software, so I recommend downloading it. And um, they're also, there's no affiliation. Um, all the links below will not be any kind of affiliate link either. So um, there's, it's a no brainer, go and download them. They are must download products. I especially also recommend getting their dynamic equalizer, which can be a brilliant de and that's called TDR Nova. I'll link it all below. TDR Molotok is not based on any one analog compressor in particular because they believe that analog hardware compression and digital software compression is just too different, that they're doing users a disservice by rigidly trying to emulate specific analog circuits. So really what they've done with Molotok is they've tried to make it as broad and versatile as possible. It can basically be whatever style you need, clean, punchy, aggressive, crunchy, slow and vibey, all of that. As for hardware compressors that I can recommend, there are a few. Firstly, the FMR, really nice compressor. I've owned this in the past. It's small, compact, and it sounds better than it has any right to for its low, low price tag. Then there's the DBX286S, which is a really nifty little unit. 
It's certainly a bargain and includes a preamp, EQ, a basic compressor, and a built-in de which is really cool. The price is crazy low and it is feature-packed. However, I wouldn't expect it to sound top-notch, but really worth considering if you're on a budget. Then I started considering units that have compression and built-in digital to analog conversion, essentially a unit that can become your audio interface. The first one I found was the Art Voice Channel, and this looks amazing value. You get a tube-based preamp, an EQ section, a very capable compressor, and a de plus that analog to digital conversion, meaning it essentially becomes your audio interface via USB. It's higher priced than the last two, but it is still inexpensive for what you're getting. I've owned Art's Pro VLA2 uh, compression unit in the past, and it was fantastic. So I really recommend Art as a, as a company. They make astounding value products. Um, and I can vouch for I can vouch for them as a company. And then there's the Universal Audio Vault series. And I'm not talking about the standard range, I'm talking about the 76 series, the 176, the 276, and the 476. So named because apparently they have 1176 style compression built in on each channel. Just be aware that these are emulations of the real thing and have no controls whatsoever. This is important to note because, you know, it, it may seem too good to be true, and I think it is. These are really dumb compression circuits and, um, you know, they, they, they won't have the level of uh, control that I think is necessary. To sum up, all of this may seem like a lot of effort. I get that. But there is really something to be said for getting a sound that you love on the way in and doing all of your compression and then not needing to do that. You know, you commit to that sound and then you don't need to spend ages in editing and you know getting uh, option paralysis of different compression software uh, plugins and that kind of thing. This is just a really good, uh, the way that I like to do it. Also, my advice is to always use compression when recording vocals. And the reason I say that is because v voice, our voices are just way too dynamic not to compress and an uncompressed vocal can sound thin, brittle, spitty, and uh, just way too dynamic. And I feel like when people hear a thin sounding vocal, some people's instinct might be to reach for an EQ and then boost the bass and all that kind of stuff. When in actual fact, really probably what it could do with is a bit of balancing with a good compressor. Anyway, that's it for now. I sincerely hope you found this helpful and interesting. I'm gonna move on to another stage in the recording chain. So I wanna hear from you, which you know, which do you want me to cover next? Shall I do some mics? Shall I do, shall I do um, uh, some more processing techniques? I have a video also about acoustic treatment coming, or it'll be out already on my channel. So do uh, get subscribed and check there. I've now made hundreds of videos about video and audio on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next. And then one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.